play Mozart Violin Concerto by Hilary Hahn and Apple Music Classical. I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Could you please say that again? No. While Apple has good intentions with the Apple Music Classical app, there's also another side to the story, and there are actually some cons that I want to address in this video. There are good things about the app that I really, really like. However, there are some really major drawbacks to this app. If you're a classical musician or if you're a classical music lover like myself, you want to be able to listen to classical music in the car on your way to work or on your way to, I don't know, your child's soccer game. I don't know what you do in your spare time, but I'm just assuming that you go to your child's soccer game. So if you are going to a destination, if you're going from point A to point B, it's not compatible with Apple CarPlay, which I feel like it's like the most basic thing. Like if you are going on your Apple CarPlay menu, like in your car, you don't see an icon specifically for that. So imagine that you're going to a gig and you wanna be listening to the Apple Music Classical app. So I'm in my car right now and I have, you know, Apple CarPlay in my dashboard. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to say, hey Siri, play Mozart Violin Concerto by Hilary Hahn and Apple Music Classical. I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Could you please say that again? No. And that is one of the biggest issues that I have with Apple Music Classical because if I'm driving, I don't want to have to go all the way into Apple Music to have to play Mozart Violin Concerto. Now let's try actually asking Siri to do just a regular Apple Music app and see if it responds. Hey Siri. Play Mozart Violin Concerto by Hilary Hahn and Apple Music. Here's Violin Concerto number 5 in A Major, K219. I Allegro Aperto on Apple Music. So in short, it does work. Like, theoretically, it does work. But at the same time, it would be very confusing for people who are thinking the Apple Music Classical app is compatible with Apple CarPlay. It is not. So... so you, just be mindful that the Apple Music Classical app is piggybacking off the Apple Music database. So if I'm going to be very specific in my search, I want to be going straight into Apple Music. I don't, I don't have any need to go into Apple Music Classical. Both apps can communicate with each other, but also have a dedicated app in Apple CarPlay for the classical music app. Because I think that would be really beneficial. If I'm listening to classical music and I have something in my playlist on the Apple classical music app, if I request to Siri doing, you know, doing a request of playing this playlist, it won't recognize it. And while I'm driving, I have two hands on the wheel. I don't wanna be distracting myself to actually press a button on the screen. I think that's like a very simple thing that they really overlooked, you know? And if Apple is listening, if you're listening, Apple, whoever's in charge of this app, please fix it for the Apple CarPlay. It's gonna be way better for classical musicians who are going to a gig, who need, who need to study their music, or for the average classical music listener who is just driving the work and want to access the app. Because now there's like more friction between myself and the app. It's very difficult for me to kind of, you know, do multiple things while I'm driving. The second point is kind of similar and in relation to the first point in the sense that if I'm driving, sometimes I just wanna ask Siri to play a playlist. And that's where the disconnect happens. Siri does not go straight into the Apple Music Classical app. It goes straight into the Apple Music app. So again, there's another disconnect. So if I'm trying to ask for a playlist and I don't have it saved in my Apple Music app, but in my Apple Music Classical app, then all of a sudden, you know, I'm disconnected from, from the whole experience of listening. I want it to be seamless. I want it to be enjoyable in the car, in my house, if I ask Siri to do this, I just want it to work. The third point is classical music has a wonderful community. And sometimes I wanna share different playlists and sometimes I wanna share different music. And as far as I know, in the Apple Music Classical app itself, I cannot share a specific playlist like I can on Spotify. And I think that is a major downgrade, which some people might want to create their own playlist and they want to just kind of send it along. 
uh, to a friend and they can listen to it on their uh, Apple device. You know, and while I'm talking here and while I'm thinking about this, these are kind of really tiny things again, but they make such a big difference. I think if you are able to connect with the community by able by being able to share your your likes and your dislikes, and sometimes you want to be able to share um, a different curated list, like curated playlist by yourself, as opposed to an, an artist curated list. By the way, those artist curated lists are great. You know, you see the Hillary Hahn, the Eric Whitaker, Long Long, Ray Chen, all of them have curated playlist, but it would be nice for me to create my own playlist. You can share individual albums and individual songs, but as of right now, there is no way for you to share an actual playlist with someone else. And, or you can also make the playlist public. So if if I'm a business, for instance, if I'm a violin podcast you know, host and I wanna share a specific playlist to my audience, I can't really do that. And I think that that is a big downside to be able to share and connect um, with with businesses like music businesses um, in this sense. Like Spotify does a great job. I'm sure Adagio has some sort of thing like that. I'm not really sure if Adagio has that, but I'm definitely going to have a Adagio versus Apple Music Classical app in the coming weeks. So definitely stay tuned for that and subscribe to the channel for that. Another thing I would not have suspected in my journey with this app and my tendencies Sometimes I'm listening to classical music while I'm working on my computer. And it would be nice to have a desktop version of the Apple classical music app. I know that many blogs out there have discussed this already, but I think it is worth mentioning because a lot of people who are getting into the classical music realm and trying to get into uh, classical music in general are probably thinking of different playlists that they can play on their a desktop while they're working in their office, in their home office, whatever the case may be. I think it's great to have it to have a mobile device to play all this music on, but it would be nice to have the option to do it on desktop as well. So there are you know multiple different angles that you can look at this um, playlists versus desktop version versus Siri integration versus CarPlay. These are things that I think that would help enhance the app and generally will help enhance the user experience. I definitely want you to check out this video over here because it shows all the good things. I know I know I talked about the bad things, but I definitely want to show you guys the good things about Apple Music Classical. Like I said, there are two sides to a coin. There are two sides to each conversation. So there you have it. Those are the bad things about Apple Music Classical and how I would change the app to make it better for audiences and for musicians alike. If you're meeting for the first time, my name is Eric, I'm a violinist. I do a lot of classical music content and violin videos on this channel. And definitely stick around for more Apple Music Classical news and updates uh, that will be probably coming within the next few months. So hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification so that way you get notified for when new videos come out. It really helps me out to create more amazing content for you. Yeah, so check out this video right over here about the good things about Apple Music Classical.